All right, today is Tuesday, which means that's time for another live Q&A all about eBay and Amazon dropshipping. As always, I'm your host, Paul J. Lipsky, coming to you today from Orlando, Florida. Let me know in the live chat where in the world you are chiming in from, and then use that live chat to ask me any questions you want about eBay, about Amazon, about dropshipping, about making money online. I'll do my best to answer as many of those questions as I can. So before we get into the questions, I did want to kind of talk about where this YouTube channel will be going. I'm going to make some changes, small changes to it going into 2021, like this new microphone I got. So let me know how the sound is. I want to make sure it's not too loud, not too soft. Let me know that. But also some more important stuff around the content I'll be bringing you on this YouTube channel. So. I want to start doing, trying some different things, experimenting with different ways of making money online, different types of content. So you will be seeing a little bit more of that going into 2021, but don't worry. You know, the thing I love talking about that you guys love hearing about is about drop shipping. I'll still be making that amazing content as well. So you'll definitely get that, but just going to try some other things out. So for instance, later this month, you know, around Christmas, New Year's, things kind of slow down after Christmas in terms of drop shipping, and you know, people are trying to spend time with their families instead. So I'm going to try some different videos that might be a little bit more fun. So definitely stay tuned for those ones. I think you guys are really going to enjoy those ones. And then going into 2021, early early next year, you're going to see some pretty cool content. I think about some different ways to make money online that not a lot of other people or anyone really is talking about. So definitely stay tuned to the channel to check that out. Just want to give you guys a heads up if you see some different type of content. Don't worry, I'm not I'm not stopping drop shipping. I'm not going to stop making videos about it. Just trying out some new content as well to see if you guys enjoy that. Now, what we like to do here on the live streams is have a little bit of fun. So, while I'm answering questions for every 20 likes this video gets, I'm going to play a level or round in Super Smash Brothers. So just to kind of kind of uh, keep things light and fun. So currently this is, these are all the characters that I have. So if you guys want to give me a suggestion of who I should play, I'm better at Link. Um, I'll, I'll say in general, I'm not that great at this game. So you might, guys might see me get destroyed. I can sometimes win if I play Link, but the other ones are kind of just a toss up. So we'll see if you guys get this video to every 20 likes, I'll do another one and each round's about two minutes long. So yeah, let's do that. And first we got to get to 20 likes. So and you guys can suggest who I play as, but let's quickly go through the chat. We're already at 17 thumbs up. So I think we're going to at least play one round here. Uh, Brian here came in at Wassum in Wassa, Wisconsin. What's up, man? Uh, okay. Good question here. Let me answer this one and then we will get to one level here. So the question is, any advice on holiday shipping and manager managing customers expectations? And have you ever had an order get stuck in shipping? I have one stuck in transit since late November. All right. Good question, ma'am. So yeah. So around two weeks before Christmas, we usually change our shipping and handling times. So that makes it really clear that it is not going to get there in time for Christmas because that's when everyone expects it. And, you know, even you can set, you can set it up so that the customers get a message right away after they order the item that says, thanks for your order. Just want to give you a heads up. You will not get this item by Christmas. We cannot make that guarantee and it probably won't come by then. So just be aware of that. So we usually do that about two weeks before Christmas. You might even do that earlier this year because there has been additional shipping delays. Now, as for the item stuck since November, you got to reach out to the, supp the supplier. You got to really get on them, contact them and figure out why it's taking so long and really get on their case. Cool. Um, let's quickly say hi to a couple more people and then we'll get to some more of these questions. Hey, what's up, Sean? Thanks for being here from Long Island. I know it got mad cold in Florida this week. Yeah, I had to put on a jacket this week. Hey, what's up, Julie in Oregon? What's up, Jose in Cali? What's up, Thomas? Thanks for being here. Lior, thanks for being here from Israel. Uh, Kevin, how's it going, man? LD, thanks for being here. Okay. No, it's not my lens. I'm just, so because I have the, the, um, the Nintendo Switch 
pulled up. I can't plug in my webcam, so I have to use my junky webcam that came with the MacBook. So it's just, you know, it's a 720, it's, it's a junk camera. But uh, otherwise, I don't have enough ports on my MacBook and I, and I forgot to buy one of those adapters allow you to plug in multiple. So you're gonna have to deal with the bad video quality, but you should be able to hear me fine and you should be able to watch me play Switch fine. Hey, what's up? Um, Pierina in New York City. Oh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, let's see. Nice, Joe and his camper. Yeah, taking a break from the camper to make some videos today. What's up, Noah? Thanks for being here. Thomas from Washington, D.C. The mic is cool. Smash that like button, guys. Mario. Yep. Oh, people were saying Mario, Kirby, Mario. Mario. <laughs> yeah, picking on me. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Took a, took a day uh, in an Airbnb to make some videos. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's get into the playing a, a game of Smash Brothers. Okay. So I heard some suggestions, but I'm going to play as Link for the first one, and maybe we'll play as one of these other ones for the other ones. And let me know, let me know guys, if you guys can hear me. Uh, fine, because like I said, I'm using that new mic. I want to make sure it, you guys, it doesn't sound too bad. It's just a little bit easier to use. And in the meantime, while I do that, I'll try to answer a question while I do that. So let me pause it real quick to find a question. And okay. All right, we'll get to that. Okay, so Alex says, for wholesale drop shipping, can I go straight to listing as many items as I want per day since it doesn't break any eBay rules uh, or does it look sketchy? So in general, what you want to do is just not ever scale up any eBay store too quickly. It doesn't matter what type of selling you're doing. It's just not a good idea. It just eBay kind of gets kind of, why are you hiding yourself? eBay kind of gets kind of suspicious. Oh, I want this star thing if they find that your store scales up too quickly and they start to audit sort of your store. So it's just not a good idea in my opinion, even if you are doing wholesale, I just would still scale up slowly. Yeah, you're not doing anything wrong, but you just don't want to have any problems with eBay. You don't want them to slow down your account. Hey, I'm doing pretty good here, I think. So that, that would be my advice, even with something like wholesale. All right, let me get this guy. Uh-oh, what does that mean? Oh, he's glowing. I don't like the look of that. Oh, look at this thing that I got. What's going on? Sometimes I have no idea what happens in this game. Like just stuff. I hate the levels where like you're just like everything's going on at once. And it's just like, what the heck is going on? All right. Let me pause and find another question. Uh, how much money you started your journey? So the cool thing about drop shipping in general is that it's very low cost to get started. And this is especially true with eBay because the, oh, I want these things. I love these things. Oh, shoot. Um, oh, no. Oh, no, I got them. So <laughs> especially with eBay. So for instance, starting an eBay account is completely free. Um, you might need a PayPal account. That's free as well. The software that I use for retail dropshipping called AutoDS, that's only about, it's only about 20 bucks a month for the non-API version, which is what I use. And then pretty much everything else is built into the price of the item. So in other words, you might sell the item and then, you know, fees come out like eBay fees, PayPal fees. Those are built into the price that you, that you list it for. And then also built in the price of that is sales tax. If you're still charged that by your supplier, the cost of shipping, if there's not free shipping with your supplier. And then also, um, what else? Yeah, the cost of the item as well. So all that would be built into the cost of the item. So really the only really fixed cost, oh look, I did it, <laughs> is 20 bucks a month or so uh, to get started with it. So very, very low uh, barrier. Oh, nice. This is how you, you win new characters or unlock new characters. You have to kind of fight them here. So I don't know who this is. I used to play this game as a kid, but I don't remember anything really about it besides that my that my friend was much better at it than I was. Okay, let me see if I can kill him. So that I can, I always do the same move. I know it's pretty cheap, but it, it always works pretty well. There you go. 
Uh. And I always, I'm always really careful when I play these, these like guys because you only get one shot. Otherwise, you'll, you'll ruin it. All right, so I unlocked a new character. That's cool. All right, let's get back to the questions, though. Um, what's up, Rich in Michigan? What's up, Maxine? All right, let's get some more questions. Uh, yeah, thought you were in the sauna with the foggy lens. Yeah, I know it's not the best, but sacrifices to play Switch. Um, say, hi, what did you said? To eBay when they blocked your account well they really shouldn't block your I don't know what you mean by block like if, if you've gotten shut down um, you there's a few reasons you might get shut down maybe the lens is a little bit let me fix this um, maybe if, if they do shut you down a lot of times all it is is they need some sort of verification from you so all you need to do is call them up and verify who you say you are and a lot of times that will get your account unblocked there could be other reasons like Vero, or if you um, don't upload your tracking numbers, those types of things. You got to resolve those issues, and then eBay might lift the suspension. But without looking at your account, I, I really don't know. Okay, so if you get, like I said, every 20 likes, so we need nine more, and I'll play another another round of Smash Brothers. Great sound on your new mic. Thanks, Leo. I appreciate it. All right, Thomas says. I use AutoDS to list my first two listings. Let me put this up here. Um, both posted as out of stock. Should I delete the listings? So Thomas, there's a few reasons that it might register as out of stock. So one reason is if um, is if the item actually is out of stock on your supplier's website. Another reason is if the shipping time is too long. So you can set up AutoDS in the settings so that if the shipping time from your supplier is too long for a certain item, then AutoDS will actually mark that item as out of stock. And that way you don't sell an item that will take too long to ship to the item. So you wanna look at those settings and also see how long the item will ship from your supplier. And that will kind of give you a good idea of whether or not the, of that's, that's what's happening there. Um, sometimes it just doesn't work right either. That, that's something that, that does happen. So that could be another reason why it's listed as out of stock. Um, Tommy says, looks like AutoDS is going downhill. Out of stock sales on the rise as of late. What are your thoughts? Tommy, um, so I actually answered this question during the private Q&A that I had for my, just the students on my course, and that's posted up in our private Facebook group. So Tommy, I thought you were a member of the course. If you are, I would check that out for the longer explanation. But basically, there's a few things to consider with this. First of all, AutoDS just recently updated their software. So it should be a little bit better. And they're going through another big update as well that should make it even better as well. So make sure you review the course because I do teach the new method, which is using the new Chrome extension with the file exchange token. That should be a lot more accurate and easier to use. So I definitely do that as well as make, make sure that you actually refresh that token and it actually is connected. And so that's something you wanna do as well by going into the Chrome extension. Those are the first things I would do. Also update your browser to make sure it's the most current browser because that's, that's important as well. Now, other things to consider is that, are that it's also just a more volatile time of year. So items are going in and out of stock more often right now and the prices are changing more often right now. So with that, AutoDS, they do scan every hour, but if they scan at three o'clock and then at 3.01, the item goes out of stock, you might sell it before AutoDS rescans at four o'clock. And you might sell an item that is in stock, and then by the time you order it later in the day, it goes out of stock. So you do wanna make sure you're placing orders more often. Now, like I've said, said before, I've tried so many of these different software before for, for this, for drop shipping on eBay. I've tried them all, none of them are perfect. They all have pros and cons. I just found that AutoDS is the easiest to use and I do find it to be just as reliable, if not more reliable than the other ones. So don't think that jumping ship and trying a new software will solve all your problems because I found that it, that it really doesn't. You know, pick one that you like, that's probably easier for you to use, which is what I did, and that's where I see the most success, okay? 
All right. Yeah. So that's pretty much the answer that they told me, Sean. And um, part of that, well, everything I said in the beginning about how they updated it and they're going to make it even better and to refresh your token and update your, your, your browser, those are all the things they told me and pretty much everything else is just based on my experience with it. Okay, if I get a virtual assistant, can I train my VA assistant to list products with the videos in your course? Um, so what you can do is when you buy the course, you can also buy my virtual assistant course. And that course will teach you step-by-step step how to hire and train virtual assistants. And also included that with that is a library of videos that you can send your virtual assistant that are specifically designed to train them as virtual assistants. So as I train you or teach you eBay dropshipping, that's different than the way I would teach and train my virtual assistants, right? Because you, as the business owner, you have to know everything about it. You have to know why, you know, why we do certain things and specific things about the setup process. Your virtual assistants don't need to know all of that. That is information overload. Also, so, so that's why the videos I make for the virtual assistants are much more straightforward. I say, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I don't even really explain why. I just show them exactly what to do and how to do it. Also, with the virtual assistants, I also make sure that even though the videos in the course are very clear, I try to make them as clear as possible and as straightforward as possible. The videos for the virtual assistants, I've slowed them down even more and speak in really plain English because I know a lot of them are from other countries like the Philippines where English might not be their first language, right? All right, we're at 40 thumbs up. So let's play another uh, round here of Super Smash Brothers. And I think after that, we can, we can reduce this. So for every 10 likes after that, I'll play another one. That sounds pretty fun. All right, so let's, let's go now. And I've never, this is a new character. So what happened here? All right, I don't know what all this means. Um, okay, so while I do that, I will pick a random battlefield and I'm gonna play this new character. Usually when I play new characters like this, I will lose because I have no idea how to play them. But let's do that. And let's do this now. Is it possible to make a sale with a listing limit of 10? Yeah, absolutely. So what, what, is, what is going on here? So as a new seller on eBay, so I have a sword here. What else do I got? Whoa, whoa, what is that? I don't know. I have no idea how to use this character. They're very strange. Okay, so as a new seller on eBay, eBay limits the number of items that you can list up for sale and the number of items that you can sell. And the reason that they do that is because they wanna make sure that, oops, just killed myself. They wanna make sure that you don't just jump onto the platform, start selling a lot of items and not really knowing what you're doing. And all of a sudden you're having all these problems and all these upset customers. So they limit, that's, that's their, their rationale, right? Whether that's right or wrong, you know, Amazon doesn't do that for instance. So whether that's right or wrong, that's what they do. So what they do for you is they limit the number of items that you can actually list up for sale. So in this case, this subscriber said they only have a limit of 10 items. So the question is, what do you do? Like, what are you supposed to do with just 10? Make the best of it. You know, we all started every big eBay store that you see, most of them all started with a very low listing limit, like 10 items or maybe, maybe 50 items. And with that, what you want to do is make sure that you're doing really excellent product research. Okay. So make sure that you are really going in and finding the best items. I really like this character. He's pretty strong. And you know, use Zeek Analytics. That's, that's what I use for product research if you want, or just do the manual method that I teach in my free training, which I have linked up in the description of all my videos. And that will tell you exactly how to find items that are already selling well on eBay. And that way really greatly increases the chances that those items will sell again. Also, what you can do is lower the prices of those items. You don't really need to concentrate right now on making a profit. I know that's really hard to, to kind of, um, for people to, oh shoot, I fell asleep, for people to realize, but, but that's really important. You know, a lot of big companies, when they start out, they're not even making a profit. So companies like Zappos, I think this was true, but they really operate at a loss for a while, uh, or Chewy, this is definitely true. 
because they just want to build up the company. And that's what you should be doing as well, because you can make a profit later. But for now, what you want to really be doing is building up your company, right? Building up your, and by that, I mean building up your limits, because the more items you sell, the more eBay is going to be happy and the more they're going to raise that limit up. So if you sell these popular items and lower the price of them, then what you're going to find is that eBay will increase your limit. That will give you more chance to sell more items, just like these big companies do as well. All right. So happy I won that one. I like this new character. So we'll try another one this time. Um, once we get six more thumbs up for another round of Smash Brothers. How do I manage all the receipts when it comes time to, to pay income tax at the end of the year? It's tricky, right? Because as dropshippers, we have a lot of receipts. In the beginning, it's very manageable, but as time goes on, it can be unmanageable. Um, now, luckily, a lot of suppliers will email you these receipts, but printing them all out is not practical. Even saving them all just doesn't really make sense either. So we rely a lot on our credit card statements and always have the backup of those emails. So we make sure we file all those emails into a separate folder. That way it's always backed up and we have it. Uh, should, should an audit ever happen, knock on wood, <laughs> hopefully it never does. So uh, yeah, we just basically use our credit card statements. How do I unlock FBA? Anyone can sell on Amazon FBA if you have an Amazon account. I'm not sure what you mean by unlock. Uh, okay, what type of drop shipping fits more for international drop shippers? Wholesale or retail? So this is not in U.S. Can you tell me any wholesale suppliers I can use on U.S.? Um, hmm. I'm trying to think. I don't have firsthand experience of this because I live here in the United States, so I haven't had to deal with this myself. My gut would initially tell me retail drop shipping, but. With wholesale, one of the benefits is that as long as you have a business here in the United States, it's pretty easy to get a relationship with the different suppliers. So in that way, it's actually easier to do wholesale. Now, I, I'm always an advocate, if you're, if you're from another country, sell on your eBay. So eBay France, eBay Canada. I know eBay.com is the biggest one, but start in your own local eBay and start there. And then you can always expand into, into the dot com. I know I didn't really answer that question, but I don't feel like I actually really can without the experience. Okay. Pierina, is that your name? How do you handle doing more than one stealth account, like having a retail and wholesale account separately? So a stealth account you really only need if you have been suspended on eBay in the past or banned and you want to start selling on eBay again, or you're relying on eBay a lot, so you want to make sure that you don't accidentally, like if an account gets suspended, in the, uh, suspended, that you have another stream of income. Really, besides that, you really don't need a stealth account. You can have multiple accounts on eBay that is allowed, totally allowed. It's only if you want to keep the accounts perfectly, sorry, completely separate, right? Um, now, if you have more than one, you just run them as stealth accounts. Now, I have videos on this. I'm not going to get too much into it, but basically you need separate IP addresses, separate cookies, separate emails, uh, different Chrome logins, different IP addresses, and you're, you can do that from one computer. It's totally possible. Okay. Smash that like button. Yeah, only three more thumbs up. We can play Super Smash Brothers, another level. Um, no. So, um, Zavi, is that how you say your name? Says my top seller level is at risk due to a tracking number issue. Do you think there is a serious difference between above standard and top seller levels for drop shipping? Not really. So for those of you who don't know, when you're selling on eBay, eBay gives all of us sellers a, a rating, a ranking. I don't know what you want to call it. So yeah, rating better word. So it's, it's top rated, above standard, or below standard. You don't want to fall below standard. That's bad. And at a minimum, you want to be above standard. And that's pretty much all you need. Top rated, it's, there are some benefits that come with it, but the benefits don't really benefit us as drop shippers. So you 
don't really have to worry about it. As long as you stay above standard, you're going to be totally fine. All right, 50 thumbs up, 50 likes. Thanks, guys. So let's play another round of Smash Brothers, and I'll try to answer a question as I do that. Hey, Paul, can you get in trouble drop shipping Amazon to eBay is the first question I will answer. Okay, so I'm going to have a bunch of videos. Well, actually, really, just one or two videos coming out soon about, specifically about the rule on eBay, even though I've made rules about it before. But basically, you know, what we've heard from eBay is that, who should I play now? Um, let me try Kirby here. I don't have, let me try Pikachu. I've done Pikachu once or twice. Okay, so eBay has said that we are definitely allowed to drop ship as long as we are drop shipping from wholesale suppliers. Now, so that's me, that's Pikachu on the left. For those of you, I should have really talked about, for those of you who don't know how Super Smash Bros. works, I'm just going around and beating up other characters. So right now I'm playing as Pikachu. You can always find me because I have that P1 over my head. Now eBay has gone on to, oh my gosh, I just killed myself. Oh, no, I didn't. eBay has gone on to say that you're not allowed to drop ship from retail suppliers or other marketplaces, although they really don't really define what that is too well. Oh my gosh. Um, so at the very least, we know wholesale is completely and totally allowed and drop shipping in and of itself is allowed. I really want that thing. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm like too fast. There we go. Um, but we do know that some suppliers uh, are better than others. What the heck is this? I'm doing really bad this time. I don't know. That's a character. What is he doing? Drawing and then attacking us with his drawings? That is strange. What the heck is he doing? Or is that me? What is going on right now? That is so strange. Anyway, um, so yeah, the, what I'm trying to say is that eBay really doesn't like when you drop ship from Amazon, okay? They tolerate it when you drop ship from other suppliers. Um, it's better if they don't even know that you're doing it. Sorry, if you drop shipping from other retailers, they, to they tolerate that. It's better if they don't even know that you're doing it. But um, yeah, it, it is fine that you if you do it but the the one that you should really avoid is amazon ebay has pretty much said they don't like it they will flag your account if they do that they will lower you in the search results for those listings so it's just not not worth it at all i'm getting i'm getting destroyed here i don't know if i'm going to win this one i think pikachu is just what i don't like, like about pikachu is that he's really like light in terms of his weight so it's easy for him to get knocked off the screen Ah, this one's almost over too. All right. Um, <laughs> Jay, we missed you, man. Oh, I won. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, go back to the beginning of the channel. It, just, it was very, very brief. Very, very brief. Okay. Ooh. Okay, let's see what this is about. All right, let me... F let me... All right, let me pause it while I answer this question. Do you think, Lear wants to know, do you think that reducing the number of listings to one, um, a quantity of one is a good strategy? Lear wants to know. So in other words, when you go to list your items, you have a choice, you can list, you can put the quantity. And since we're drop shippers, we can really put the quantity at, what the heck is going on? At whatever we want it to be. So it doesn't have to be just one, you know, as long as it's in stock on our supplier's website, no. Oh, good. We can, I think this is there. That's what I wanted to do. I got to hit her with it. Um, as long as it's on uh, in stock on our supplier's website, we can, we can list it up for sale ourselves. So, oh no, I always kill myself with people. There you go. Um, so you can really put the quantity at whatever you want, but there is a strategy involved with it. So the strategy, the basic strategy is that, you know, if you put it at one, then customers are going to see that there's only one left and feel more inclined to buy it quickly, right? Now, there, that doesn't work all the time, okay? Because one, some, some buyers know that we do that, but really the more important thing is that sometimes for some items, customers want more than one. So for instance, things that might, yes, I got them. So things that they might buy more than one of. So things like, a, like two side tables, for instance, 
or I don't know, coasters, you know, just think about it. Is this something that people might buy more than one of? Because if they do, then it would be, it would be, it would be better for you to have a higher quantity. So I've experimented with this and I see that some items, like a lot of replenishable items, people, things that people might buy a lot of, like paper towels, for instance, people will buy a lot more than one if you offer that as an option. Whereas with some other things that might be more like gift items, if there's only one of those, you'll see a lot of people just buying it because they have that scarcity where they think there's only one left. Okay. Um, uh, just be patient, Ronald. So I'm not sure. There's a lot of factors that go into this, of course, as to how much you're selling. But be patient with it, man, because you know in the beginning it can be slow, but things will speed up once you kind of get momentum going with it. So I would look at you know things like how many listings you have up, how many items you're adding every day or every week, and how much time you're spending on product research. What are you pricing your items at? Can you lower your prices just to kind of speed up the sales? like we were talking about before. I don't know what this means. Company status? Um, uh, I don't know about that. I don't know what you mean by this. Kind of, I'm not sure what you're saying. Uh, so AutoDS stopped working for me a month ago and I just gave up on it, but is it possible is that I'm just on the old extension? Yeah, use a, well, yeah, use a new extension. Um, it's actually not a new one, but you have to update it. So I would make sure it's updated. I would actually just delete it and reinstall it to make sure you have the latest version and make sure you have the latest Chrome extension or sorry, Chrome browser and that you set it up correctly. Just go through the course, and uh, I know you were one of my students, so go through the course and just make sure it's set up properly. So I'm a little behind on the chat, but we're, if we get seven more thumbs up, we'll play another, another level or another round. I'll try that new character out as well. I'm kind of eager to try her and see what she's like. Um, Getting trolled by Jay again. Okay. Uh, it looks a lot bigger. Yeah. I, we usually get an Airbnb once a month just so I can record like, like a bunch of YouTube videos in just one day. So I don't have to try to find the space to do it in the van. So uh, yeah, that's a lot, a lot of times why you'll see me in an Airbnb like once a month. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, I do travel around full time, usually in this in this van right over here. But um, yeah, that's that's we don't have a house. That's what we live in. Yeah, good suggestion. Uh, Brian uh, created a software called Easy Fees, which is pretty great for accounting. It kind of makes it a lot more organized. Oh yeah, good point. Spelled it wrong, Brian Williams. <laughs> So they've done this in the past, right? So we would hope so as things change again. You know, earlier in 2020, when we had a lot of problems with items not being shipped out in time that were outside of our control, all sorts of problems that happened because of the pandemic, eBay kind of gave us a lot of grace period for that, which is awesome. Now there's more cases that are surging again. Does this mean that there's gonna be more shutdowns? You know, California's done that obviously. You know, a lot of states are very resistant to doing that. Um, California obviously isn't as resistant to doing that. Um, so we'll see what happens. We just don't know what things will look like. You know, the, um, so we'll see. And what else with that? Oh yeah, so without more of like a national lockdown like we saw in the past, which pretty much every state has some sort of lockdown, then it's hard to tell what eBay will do if they'll, if they'll grant that as well. I think in general, what we're seeing across the country is that people more, more, were more willing to kind of uh, you know, go into quarantine or, or, or self-quarantine or voluntary quarantine or 
you know, social distance earlier in the year when things were really unknown. And now as the year progressed, people just seem less willing to do it and less willing to kind of to um, make changes as the, as willingly as they would in the past. And I think you'll see that probably a lot with these companies as well. Whereas eBay was very willing to kind of make these changes because they knew things were kind of different. But I think I'd be surprised if they did that again. But it would be the right thing to do, I think, if any place shut down. Like California, I think they should you know, make some sort of arrangement for us because what if we have customers in California? What if we have items shipping out from California? You know, that could be difficult for anyone selling any sorts of products. And I think they should definitely account for that. Um, and I think they will. I just don't think it would be as broad of protection as they had in the past. Like with eBay, if there's ever like forest fires in California or national or yeah, national national disasters of any sort of sort, like a hurricane, they usually make some sort of, you know, um, you know, arrangement for that as sellers for us so that we don't you know, have problems with our metrics because of that. But it's a very like um, geographically centrated sort of protection, right? Whereas only if we're shipping items to California where the forest fires are, only if we're shipping from that location, right? I think we'll see more of that than we will kind of like a national blanket. Yeah, we're just gonna have a huge grace period for everyone because pretty much the whole country was shut down at some point earlier in 2020. But who knows? I'm at eBay, they do whatever they want. So that's just kind of my guess is what they'll, what they'll do. All right, yeah, and that guy's name is Hustle Williams on YouTube. The one with the uh, that software. Uh, can you please tell me about the sales tax collected by eBay, and is it beneficial for sellers, or eBay takes them every month? So Finnick, um, eBay will automatically collect and remit sales tax for you for a bunch of states. It's like over 30 of them. You have no choice in the matter. They'll do it automatically. You can't tell them not to. You can't tell them to do it. They just do it. Now for some of the other states you have to actually do it yourself. But in the beginning, you pretty much the only state you have to worry about is the state that you actually live in and the state, any other states you have a physical presence in, like a warehouse in. But for the most part, it's just gonna be the state you live in and eBay is gonna take care of the rest. And if that state that you live in is one of the states that eBay's taking care of, well, your job's a lot easier as well. That's a short answer. It's a long answer. You should definitely do your own research on that because lots of different circumstances uh, change that analysis. And I just can't get into all of it right now because it's pretty in-depth. Okay. Um, how to compete with local sellers? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Got bans are starting stealth account now. So that's, that's a reason to start a stealth account, yeah. Okay, let's play another round. Okay, so this time I'm going to I hate some of these levels that are just kind of crazy. I've never played this level, so we try this one. And what do you guys think? Should I raise the stakes? Should I add another? It kind of gets a little crazy when I have too many in here, but we'll add another one in, and I will try this new character. Here she is. And let's see what she's like. I want to start a stealth account because of flag. How much does it cost? So let me think about this. So it really shouldn't, the only thing you really need is a new VPN. Um, I haven't bought one in a while, and so I'm not really sure, but it's not that expensive from what I remember. I think it's like less than 20 bucks a month or something like that. And that's going to allow you to have a completely separate, ooh, that's brutal. That's gonna have, allow you to have a completely separate IP address than the one that you use for your main um, account or the, the one that you've used for your main account in the past. So that's, that's going to be the most expensive thing. You don't need a new computer. You can just use a different Chrome login. Um, you don't need pretty much anything else. Um, so yeah, that, those are things that I would look for. And so it shouldn't be too expensive to, to start a stealth account. All right. So I'm trying to figure out all of her moves. Sometimes it's really not clear when you're in the middle of a battle. So, boom. Oh, she does this cool swipe up thing. All right, let's see, can I go like this? Ooh, a Pokeball. What's a purple Pokeball? Uh-oh. Oh no, that's mine, sweet. Okay. 
Yes. OK, let me pause it while I answer another question. Um, yeah, you can also buy. That. So that's you can buy one. Yeah. And when you buy one, it does increase your chances of them being successful because it is you can mess them up so that when you mess them up, it doesn't work and the account pretty much gets banned right away. So you can buy them on different websites. The only one that I've heard of is called like Stealth Books, but I've never done it. So that's where I would look for that. Um, <laughs> Uh, you can use your index finger to give the video a thumbs up. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, no, we are still doing the Q&A. So yeah, Jason, good question. Thanks for being here, man. So we are still doing the Q&A every week. I don't plan on getting rid of that. That's a really good way for me to like connect with you guys, figure out what your questions are, what it is that you're struggling with, you know, a lot of the suggestions you guys or questions you guys have lead to me creating more longer form videos or more concentrated videos that aren't live here. So I find them really helpful for making the YouTube channel, uh, for, for making my YouTube videos. I find it really helpful for making my course better. And I just like connecting with you guys. So th those are these are definitely not going away here. Um, and I talked about all the other kind of benefits or changes that I'm going to be making in the beginning of the video. So you might want to check that out, but it's not a big deal. Did I just die? All right, I don't know if I, I don't know who won that one. Is that me? No. Dang, that stinks. I'm embarrassed. Is that the first one I lost? That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Ooh, okay. All right, we have a new foe. That means I could win a new character. Oh no, I hate this level. This level is the craziest level. Let me answer a question while I do this to make it even harder for myself as I'm distracted. Um, okay. Okay, let's see. Retro's favorite character is Kirby. I'll try Kirby next time. Oh, maybe we're joking. I don't know. I'll still play Kirby next time. <laughs> Drop shipping. Um... Can you list a Vera item without using their pick? All right, that's a good question. I'm trying to find a question that I can easily answer while kind of being distracted. So the short answer is, so if you don't know what Vero is, Vero is eBay's verified rights owner program. So, so basically when we're selling on eBay, what's this guy going to do? When you're selling on eBay, you're, you're generally allowed to sell items and use the stock images and stock description, but those are technically copyrighted by whoever took them who are the brand owner. See, this is when the level gets completely crazy. Like what is going on right now? So, um, yes, I got them. So that means that some brand owners do not want you to use their stock images and stock descriptions. So they're part of eBay's Vero program. You know, as part of your, their Vero program, they say, yes, you're allowed to sell our items. That's a right that you have, but you can't use stock images and stock descriptions. So if you do that, those listings will get removed and you can get in trouble with eBay. The question is, can you sell them anyway with your own images and description? And technically the answer is yes, you can do that. So that is an option. I have seen people do that, but it's extra work on your part. Um, so just, just kind of something you have to kind of weigh if it's kind of worth your time to do that or not. I think I just, oh shoot. So sometimes the chat, it scrolls down. So I think I missed some questions. I'm trying to find my place again, but I think I might've just skipped a bunch, but I'll keep going here. Uh, Tim just started a stealth account. Just trying to spread out his risk. Be super careful, Tim. Don't want your main account to get in trouble because of the stealth account. Um, I'm on my second day, just browsing eBay. Should I, drop ship or should I list an item I have on hand? My advice is to list an item you just have around the house that you want to get rid of, take your own photos, write your own description. So there's no issues with that. Um, it's just a much easier or much safer way, I should say, of priming your account. Do that and yeah, that's going to be a, a, the smartest thing to do to stay safe with that account. Uh, 
Walmart to Amazon. Yeah, I mean, it, it, so what I'll say is that this definitely works, but for new sellers on Amazon, really the best thing to do is start using wholesale suppliers right away because Amazon does review new accounts a lot more than they review older accounts and are a lot stricter about it. So you wanna make sure that everything, every, everything is by the books. And the safest way to do that is do wholesale drop shipping. So in my Amazon drop shipping course, that's what I teach. I teach that, yes, I know you wanna do retail. I'm going to show you how to do that. Drop shipping from retail websites. But in the beginning, you should be using wholesale suppliers when you start out, uh, because that's going to give you the, the fewest number of issues. Uh, one open Chrome, tons of out of stock. I'm not sure I follow this. Why would you need to open an incognito? I'm not quite following it, a little lost. I'll have to follow up on that. I'm kind of curious what that is. Hey, what's up, Scott in Atlanta? That art in the background in that B&B is bland. Oh, yeah, I don't know. But there, I, I didn't really notice it. We have a hot tub, so that's cool. <laughs> okay. How do I ensure that I don't get an order and then see that the item is out of stock? So that's what the software is supposed to do, okay? So what the software is supposed to do, like AutoTS, is that once the item is listed with the software, if this item goes out of stock, it's supposed to put the item as out of stock on eBay for you. So that, that shouldn't happen if the software is running right and you're using it correctly. Also, you wanna make sure you're placing your orders often enough so that you don't, ask, you don't sell an item and then it goes out of stock before you get a chance to order it. Okay. Hey, what's up, Ronald? Didn't realize you were in Orlando as well. Jay's been Pleasantly pleased with managed payments. I don't have too many complaints. Awesome, Craig. Yeah, was, Craig had a question about finding suppliers for wholesale. So keep at it, man. You'll find them. Uh, yeah. Okay, Tim says, I'm about to pull the trigger and go in on your Amazon drop shipping course using a seasoned FBA account. How sustainable is retail drop shipping on Amazon? Do you know of long-term Amazon drop shippers? So I know many long-term Amazon drop shippers who've been doing it for a long time, years now, using retail drop shipping. A lot of them are still using Walmart and a bunch of other suppliers as well. So it definitely has long-term viability. Now, like I said earlier, you should be careful as a new seller. Now. I don't, I haven't worked with anyone I can think of off the top of my head recently who are moving from doing FBA to doing drop shipping. Because my general advice to people now is, like I said before, start out by doing wholesale drop shipping. It's completely by the books, it's allowed by Amazon, so there's, there's no issues, not doing anything wrong. So that would be my advice for any new seller on Amazon who just wants to do drop shipping right from the start. But since you've already been doing FBA, then I would think that your account's already primed, it's already safe, it's already good for you to just jump into retail. But if you wanna be super careful, you might wanna just do some wholesale. It's probably fine, to be honest, but it really depends on how long your, your account's been around doing FBA. But, but that, that should be fine, doing it just straight into retail since you already have been doing Amazon FBA already. As long as you've been doing it for a little while, then you should be fine. Okay. Hey, what's up? That's cool. You should go over there and ask them what they're doing most of the time. <laughs> We're always kind of wondering, what is eBay doing? What are they thinking? Okay. Um, Ricardo says, hey, Paul, I follow you. Is your course a one-time fee? So Ricardo, you can check out the course that's linked up in the description, and you can see that there's an option to pay just a one-time fee, which is $297, or 
or you can do three payments of $127 spread out over three months. Either way, you get the same course, you get full access right away, you still get my 30 day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. So the short answer is if you pay the 297, it's a one-time fee. And I give you all updates included with that for free. Oh, sweet. Maybe, maybe when I ask them, it, it helps somehow. <laughs> Uh, all right. All right. Let me see if there's any questions here. Mm. A lot of people are trying out API. So this is something I wasn't aware of. I've got to check this out. If you use API software, you will get flagged. Like, it's, it's, it's going to happen. There's no way it's not going to happen. That's one of the ways eBay identifies drop shippers and th they will flag you. So I got to talk to those people in the group, but that's really true. Um, cause it's going to happen if you use API. Can you drop a tracking orders spreadsheet? Oh, um, no, I have one in my course but I'm not gonna make it public. It's just, you know, students pay, they get special, special attention of mine, they get all my best stuff, so I can't make everything free. It wouldn't be fair to them. <laughs> this is funny. Totally get what you're saying about going to AutoDS. I just really want to follow Papa Paul and do exactly everything he does. That's so funny. So, um, my mom's, dad so my maternal grandfather his name was paul and we always called him papa paul so that's pretty funny he died when i was really young though he smoked a lot of cigars unfortunately uh, okay All right I was joking kirby's awesome okay i'll try kirby i'll try kirby for the last round i think we might get there if you get three more likes on this video three more thumbs up I'll play as Kirby. We'll get it done. Everyone told me that, that, um, which one's the best? Everyone told me that, that surprisingly the best characters are, let me do the best characters I heard are Peach. Someone told me and Villager and Inkling. And I played as all three of them and I do not see it. I think I, I they're like really difficult to use. I don't see any power there, but apparently they're amazing. So, okay. Um, how do I go from, I'm not sure I understand. David, I'm not sure I understand your question. I'm sorry. All right. Yes. So if you, one of your eBay accounts has been flagged, eBay won't automatically flag all your accounts. It only flag the one account. So you can easily just start another account or switch over to a different account that you already have that has been flagged and you're not going to run into an issue. You don't have to start a stealth account or anything like that. Uh, okay. One more thumbs up. We'll play our last round here. Now, in managed payments, you don't get your money right away. It does take a few days for it to reach your bank account, unfortunately. So it kind of stinks, but that's the way it is. Um, if you want your VAs to work on your stealth account, then you need to, you can, you can have them set it up the same way. So add the Chrome extension to the browser and give them your IP address login information and they should be able to do it. All right, guys, so let's do this. Last, last round here. I promise I'll play as Kirby. So that's what we'll do. And let's see how bad I stink at this. All right, I should start a, sorry, I should start Twitch, right? That'd be a great use of my time. Okay, oops, God, Kirby sucks. That was a joke. A joke because he 
Yeah. I think you guys get it. So I get that I can like inhale him, but what do I do after I inhale him? Ooh. Oh yeah, whoa. See, I know that's my dragon, but it's really distracting me. So I, I made that dragon, so he's fighting for me, but it's really distracting. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta knock somebody off if I'm gonna win. Jeez. Oh. I gotta, I gotta close this out strong, and I feel like I'm not. I feel like I'm. Gosh, darn it. There we go. I feel like I'm not I'm not getting him. I got the hammer thing, which is pretty awesome. Oh no. Now I got a little hat on me. I think I somehow cloned myself sort of and like now I'm like Link somehow. But I don't know what that means. Oh now I can shoot a bow and arrow like Link. Okay, okay, okay. Shoot. I'm trying to... I don't think I won this one. There we go. Was that enough? Was that enough to win it? Oh, yeah. I did it, guys. I feel... This is, this is the best I've ever played. I, I gotta admit, this is the best I've ever played Super Smash Brothers. Normally, I'm a lot worse. So you guys obviously are my lucky lucky charms here. Um, <laughs> once you inhale them, push down and take their power. Okay. Well, this guy looks completely scary. So I am going to inhale him. How do I inhale? And now I have his power, which is what? Fitting, spitting fireballs. Okay. Oh, he's completely frightening. Oh no, go, go, Kirby. There we go. Oh yeah, I love that move. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Who just won that? I have no idea what just happened. I feel like we both just died. What just happened? Did neither of us win? I don't know, guys. But what I do know is that I had a lot of fun hanging out with you guys, talking about dropshipping, playing Super Smash Brothers. So I hope you guys had fun as well. Uh, next week, same time, every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure to join us for more fun. I don't know what we're doing next week. But I'll definitely be here answering all your questions about eBay and Amazon dropshipping and making money online. So thanks for hanging out. See you guys in the next video. And make sure to subscribe. Bye for now.